Welcome to Chemical Process Safety. This video is about source models. Loss of containment of material from processes is the start of many chemical process safety incidents. Deepwater Horizon and Bhopal are famous examples, but there are many, many others. A source model refers to an equation that estimates how much material could be lost. For example, when the news reports that 176 million gallons of oil were lost in the Deepwater Horizon oil spill, this was estimated by a source model. Source models are important because they answer one of the key fundamental process safety questions, which is how bad could an incident be? Let's look at an example of a source model. Let's say that we wanted to calculate how much liquid chemical we could lose through a hole. We start by applying a mechanical energy balance, which is an equation first introduced in material and energy balances. Recall that the mechanical energy balance is derived from the general energy balance after assuming that there are no temperature or phase changes. You might have revisited this idea in your fluids class. Also recall that the deltas in this equation refer to a change in initial and final states, or a change in one point to another. For this analysis, we'll take point 1 to be right next to the hole inside the vessel, and point 2 to be right outside the vessel from the hole. Defining terms, we have pressure, density, average velocity, the velocity profile correction factor, the gravitational constant, the acceleration due to gravity, the frictional loss, shaft work, and the mass flow rate. You might not have seen the velocity profile correction factor before. This is a number between 0 and 1 that quantifies the uniformity of the velocity profile. For laminar flow, which is not very uniform, alpha equals 0 0.5. And for turbulent flow, the velocity profile becomes more uniform, so alpha tends towards 1. Also remember the gravitational constant. This is a tricky concept that arises due to how different unit systems define force and mass. For SI units, GC simply equals 1 kilogram meter per newton second squared. And for US customary units, GC simply cancels with G. If you'd like to know more, check out a video I made about this concept for my material and energy balances class. I'll link to it in the description below. For flow through a hole, there is no height change and no shaft work. Therefore, delta Z and shaft work terms cancel. Furthermore, liquids are incompressible, meaning the density is independent of the pressure. This means that the differential can be replaced by a delta. Dealing with the frictional loss is a bit tricky. The approach used in the Crowell and Louvar book is to define a discharge coefficient like this. Instead of subtracting friction, you multiply the pressure drop term by C1 squared. This enables us to solve for the exit velocity of the liquid. Keep in mind that here I've assumed that the velocity right inside the hole is negligible, and that delta P is simply the gauge pressure inside the hole, since the outside should be atmospheric. Multiplying C1 by the square root of alpha seems a bit clunky, so let's just replace that with a new discharge coefficient, C0. Now that we have an expression for the velocity, we can multiply by the area of the hole to obtain the flow rate. If I want the mass flow rate instead of the volumetric flow rate, also multiply by density. If any of this is confusing, perform a unit check to see why these operations are necessary. Okay, let's revisit the frictional loss. The value of C0 can be determined experimentally, and the conclusion is that a smooth, well-rounded nozzle has a discharge coefficient of 1, meaning no frictional loss. On the other hand, a very rough, jagged hole has a discharge coefficient that tends towards 0.61. The true value for a given hole will be somewhere in between these values. Thinking a little deeper, a hole that comes about accidentally is very unlikely to be smooth. It might be caused as a result of corrosion or by a puncture, which means that there would be some frictional loss. However, from a safety perspective, it is oftentimes better to be conservative and assume the worst case scenario. In this instance, that means the hole with less frictional loss or a higher C0. As always, lean on your engineering judgment to guide you. So there we have it. Here is our source model for the mass flow rate of liquid through a hole, which depends on the area of the hole, the friction loss due to the roughness of the hole, the density of the fluid, and the gauge pressure of the inside of the vessel. Going one step further, if we know how long the spill persists, we can multiply the flow rate times the time to get the total amount of material lost. And that's all for this video. See you all next time.